Okay, today we're working on transforming quadratic functions. That's when we are moving the, sh the uh, graph. Okay, all of the quadratics today are going to be written in a special way. It's going to look like this. Um, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And when it's written like this, we can tell certain things are happening with the graph. The first thing we can figure out is if there is a vertical translation. A vertical translation. Translation means slide. Vertical is up and down. So I can tell if the graph is going to be moved up or down. And the way I can determine that is the k value. So whatever this k is over here. If k is greater than 0, you're going to slide the graph up. that many units. So if it says plus 3, you're going to move the graph 3 up. If that k value says minus something, so it's less than 0, you'll slide the graph down. Next, we can see if there's a horizontal translation. Again, a translation is a slide. Horizontal is left to right. And we can tell if it moves left and right based on what the value of h is right here. If h is greater than 0, you're going to slide the graph to the right. And if h is less than 0, going to slide the graph to the left. Okay, next I have the vertex form. Of a quadratic. When something's written in this form, it's easy to find the vertex. So vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So when it's written like that, the vertex is the point h comma k. And we can also find the axis of symmetry. It's always going to be x equals, and then it's whatever the h value is. So for example one, these will all be vertical translations. And with the vertical translation, when the equation is written in vertex form, so when it's written like this, this k value, this moves the graph up or down. So we're going to practice that today. Um, for example one, we need to graph each of these equations using actual graph paper. 
Then we're going to give the minimum or the maximum and the axis of symmetry. So for each equation, graph it on graph paper. Tell me if it has a minimum or a maximum and what's the axis of symmetry. Okay, this is 1a. g of x equals x squared plus 2. I'm going to have us graph the parent function just so you can see where the original quadratic falls. Okay, so when I have a regular quadratic, just the parent function is y equals x squared. I'm going to graph that with just a pencil so you can actually see the graph. So you know what to compare all of these ones to. So y equals x squared. This is just the generic quadratic graph. Okay, go ahead and put a dot at negative uh, 2, positive 4. Negative 2, positive 4. Negative 1, 1. 0, 0. Positive 1, positive 1. And positive 2, positive 4. So this is just the regular graph for uh, quadratics. So connect those with a nice smooth curve. Okay, so this is the graph for y equals x squared. But now I'm going to be doing transformations. I'm going to be moving this graph. So for the 1a, it's going to be y equals x squared plus 2. So I'm going to put that into my graphing calculator. Plus 2. Okay, now go ahead and graph these points. Um, negative 2, positive 6. Negative 2, positive 6. Negative 1, positive 3. 0, comma 2. 1, comma 3 and 2 comma 6. Everyone should be doing this. No one should just be sitting there. Yeah, I'm putting on the same one just so you can see what it looks like. So from the original y equals x squared to this one, I just moved all of the points two units up. So if you find any of the points, if you go two up, that's my new point. Here's a point, I went two up. I went two up, two up, two up. So it's the exact same graph, although this probably should have this way. Everything just got moved two units up, and that tells me that plus two, that's what mo is moving it up two units. The next thing I need to do is determine if it has a minimum or a maximum. So this graph is going up. So that means it has a lowest point. If it was going down, it would have a highest point. But this orange graph is going up. So the point, the lowest point, is this point right here, the vertex. That point, that is the lowest, so it's the minimum. And that point is at 0, 2. That's the minimum value. It's always going to be, well, for right now, it's going to be 0, comma, whatever your k value is.
And then last, we need to find the axis of symmetry. Now that's the line that you could fold the graph over and it matches up symmetrically. So hopefully you notice if you drew a line in right here, that would fold perfectly so that the graph, that parabola is symmetrical. So the axis of symmetry That's this dotted line. It's kind of hard to draw it in because it's right on that y-axis. But it's always going to be x equals, and it's really going to be whatever this value is right here, your x value of your vertex, x equals 0. It'll always be x equals and then this value will always be whatever that value is. It's always the x of your vertex. Okay, let's do another one like that. First, look at your notes. Are you going to be able to look at this in two weeks and know what you did? Okay, 1B. G of X equals X squared minus 5. Okay, we need to keep graphing the parent function. I just did that that first time because I wanted you to see where X squared falls on the graph. Okay, get some graph paper. We're going to graph X squared minus 5. Okay, put the equation into your calculator. And I'm going to plot negative 3, positive 4. Negative 2, negative 1. one uh, I'm sorry, negative 1, negative 4. 0, negative 5, 1, negative 4. And you can see it's symmetrical, hopefully, and just copy down the rest of the dots. Okay, go ahead and connect those with a nice smooth curve then. So there's our graph. Then we have to state if it has a minimum or a maximum. So since the graph is opening upwards, this bottommost dot right there, that vertex, since it's at the bottom, that's called a minimum. Oops. And that minimum value is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. And then the axis of symmetry. It's always x equals. And then it's just going to be the x value of your vertex. So the, whatever the x is, so it's a 0. Or if you think of it as the line that you could fold this over. You could fold it right here where x is 0. OK, 
Okay, make sure your notes are nice and neat so you can read them later. Okay, you're gonna do two. You can work by yourself or you can go work with a friend. G of X equals X squared plus four. Okay, you need to graph, find the minimum or maximum, and then what's the axis of symmetry. Okay, for number one, your graph, x squared plus four, should be moved four units up. That bottommost dot, that's the minimum of the graph. The minimum of the graph is at zero, four. The axis of symmetry is at x is zero. Questions there. Um, I did have somebody ask, when is it a maximum? If you had a graph, that was going down, then this topmost point, this is called your maximum because it's the topmost, it's the maximum point in this graph. The ones we've done so far all went up, so they all had a minimum. If they go down, they'll have a maximum. Okay, question two. This graph was shifted seven units down. Its minimum point, the bottommost point, was at zero, negative seven. And the axis of symmetry is at x is zero, because you could fold it right on that y-axis. Questions on those? Okay, now we're going to switch over and we're going to work on horizontal transformations. So these ones were vertical. Now we're going to do horizontal. Okay, in these equations, it'll say g of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And for these ones, you need to be very careful. Because you it needs to say x minus, and then whatever this h value is, and it has to come after a minus sign. This h value, it's what's going to tell us how to move it horizontally. So horizontally is from left to right. So that's going to tell us, how did I write that? This will move the graph left or right. So that value of the H tells me if I'm moving it left or right. Okay, again, we're going to graph, give the minimum or the maximum, and the axis of symmetry. Um, y equals parentheses x minus 1 squared. Okay, so you have to imagine if this was written in this whole vertex form of like g of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. This is really saying a is 1, x minus 1 squared, and a plus is 0 at the end. So that means my h, it's the number that comes after the minus sign. So h is the number 1. It's a positive 1, so it's going to move it 1 unit to the right. Okay, let's graph that so we can see it. Okay, 
So you're going to put in y equals x minus 1 squared. Put that into your graphing calculator. some points. Uh, let's go to a negative 1, positive 4. Put it out at negative 1, positive 4. 0, comma 1. 1, comma 0. 2, comma 1. And 3, comma 4. So connect that with a nice smooth curve. And you'll see the whole graph got moved one unit to the right. Okay, if you want to glue that into your notes. Next thing we have to do is determine what is the minimum or the maximum. So since this graph is opening upwards, this bottom point, the vertex, that's your minimum or minimum value. That point right there. And that point is at 1 comma 0. That's your vertex, that bottommost point. Bless you. And then axis of symmetry. It's always x equals. You can either pull the x off of your vertex. So x is 1. Or look at the graph and look at where would you fold this graph for it to be symmetrical. And that would be right here at x is 1. That's your axis of symmetry right there. Because if I folded this graph, it would match up. Those points are on either side of that axis of symmetry. Okay, you can glue that and put that in your notes. Equals, parentheses, x plus 1 squared. So keep in mind, vertex form is g of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So the equation I'm working with, it really has a 1 in front, so it's 1 parentheses x minus so it needs to become an x plus 1. So it's going to be x minus negative 1 squared plus there's a 0 because there's no number at the end of mine. Because x minus negative 1, subtracting a negative is really x plus 1, right? Okay, now I can tell what my h value is. h is negative 1. So that means I'm going to move my graph one unit to the left, and it goes zero units up or down because there's no k value at the end. Okay, get graph paper. Okay, go ahead and graph this. So the entire graph, when you um, graphed it, it just shifted or slid or translated one over to the left. This is a minimum value because it's the bottom. That vertex is at negative one comma zero. So check your answer there. And then the axis of symmetry, that just means where could you fold it at and it be symmetrical. It's always gonna be x equals and it's the x value from your vertex. So negative 1, or you can just look at the graph 
and you can see that axis of symmetry is right here. That you could fold it right there and it's reflected on either side. Questions on that? We will practice more of that tomorrow. You do not have homework for tonight.